Ephesians 6, chapter, uh, verse 10 through 18. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all of the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Jesus. I just want to preach to you this Jesus. morning, being prepared for the battle. So we all pray one more time for the, for the preaching of the word, Lord. You have moved in this place in an incredible way, Lord. I feel healing. I feel restoration. Lord, I feel something that excites me and ignites me in this place, Lord. And I pray, Jesus, that as your word comes forth, God, let it come forth under the unction of the Holy Ghost. Let it come forth with power. Lord, I pray that wickedness would flee and any hindering spirit would flee because the word of God is powerful. It is quick. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, Lord. And I pray, Jesus, let it help us. Let it help us to leave this place more in power. Lord, Lord, Jesus, determined than ever before to fight this battle. Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you Jesus. for standing. Make no mistake today that we are fighting in a battle. Right. We're fighting in a battle that will last far beyond our known existence. Jesus. The stakes have never been higher. The reward never greater. And today we find ourselves on the battlefield fighting for our lives for a promise. Yeah. That will last the rest of eternity. Right. Do not be deceived. We do not fight this battle alone. Nor by our strength alone. Paul wanted to let us know. That the first thing you need to do. To prepare for this battle. Is to be strong. In the Lord. Right. The Bible states that our enemy. Is like a roaring lion. Seeking whom he may devour. If you understand anything. About lions hunting habits. They go after the old. They go after the weak. They go after the sick. And typically, yeah. if you're any of those things and you're faced with a lion, you're going to be a casualty right. to that lion. And if you can understand that the spirits in which we fight do not rest, but continue to hunt and to search and continue to seek for those that they can easily pick off, then you must understand and realize the importance of making sure that you are strong. In fact, if we could be as committed to seeing souls saved as the enemy is to seeing them go to hell, we would turn this world upside down. Jesus. David couldn't have said it better than what we read in 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 33. God is my strength and power. He maketh my way perfect. David, David would also go on to say in Psalms 28, 7, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in Him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoiced, and with my song will I praise Him. You see, you can't trust in your strength, because inevitably, your strength will fail you. This fight is too long and our enemy is too powerful to try to fight this thing alone. And hoping to get your strength from others is a plan that will surely fail because there are few that are willing to stand with you at all times. And even if they're willing to stand, 
sometimes they are so easily persuaded to fight alongside of the enemy that they were fighting before. So then it is imperative that we find our strength in the Lord. Moses would say in Deuteronomy 32, 30, how should one chase a thousand and two put 10,000 to flight except their rock had sold them? Rock being capitalized. Rock meaning Jehovah. Rock meaning the Lord. Amen. And the Lord had shut them up. Jeez. Had shut them down. Yeah. You see, when the Lord is your strength, your fighting ability goes up exponentially. By myself, I may be able to fight off one or two. But yeah. with the Lord, I can fight off a thousand. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. And if I can get someone by my side, and we can fight together, 10,000 have to flee. You see, when we fight together, the strength of the Lord is multiplied. That's right. Hallelujah. And my God, I wonder what this city would look like. I wonder what this state would look like if we could get just a few apostolics to lock together and yeah. quit making it about petty things and say, yeah. brother, I'm going to stand with you and we're going to fight this battle together. I'll tell you what happens. We'd see revival. We would see healing. Right. We would see restoration. That's right. Amen. When the Lord is our strength. Jesus. Unless we become puffed up in ourselves, we must understand that this awesome strength just comes from the power of God's might. Yeah. Not my power. My, not my power. Not my might. Jeez. Not someone else's might. Not the might of this nation, Jeez. but God alone. Don't you understand that God is more powerful than any number of evil forces that may be against us? He's more powerful than the government, any government that may try to stop us. And, he, and there is no weapon formed against him or against us that will prosper as long as the Lord is our strength. Right. That's why we can say with confidence, if God be for us, then who can be against us? And if you're filled with the Holy Ghost, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And I don't know about you, but statements like that make me feel like dancing. And they make me feel like shouting. Because we know that our strength is in the Lord. That's right. God in his humility. I want us to really soak this in. God in his humility looked above him just to see if there was any there. But he didn't find any. In his humility, he looked beside himself, but he didn't find anything. Because the only time God sees anything is when he looks down. Because all things, devils, angels, people, or any other form of power are beneath him. That is why we can boldly declare that he is all mighty. Right. See, our God is not just mighty, but he is all mighty. There is none more mighty than him. All things are subject to him. And because there is none that are as mighty as him, we have access to that might That's right. when he is our strength. Amen. When you understand where your strength and power comes from, the next thing you need for the battle is specialized armor that God has designed for his people. Yeah. Paul would say, put on the whole armor of God. But it seems that more and more people want to pick and choose what is really important. I'm sorry if this armor cramps your style. But the reason why Paul said that we need to put on the whole armor isn't so we can look cool at some costume party. Isn't so we can puff ourselves up and say, look at me, doesn't this look good? But it's because that we need to be able to stand up against the schemes of the devil. And I'll tell you what's stupid. It's not wearing this armor that some think is outdated. What is stupid is going into the battle without the armor. Because without the armor, you become the weakest link. That's good. 
And you're surrounded by people who are strong. Jeez. And then you are the target yeah. of the enemy. Jeez. You see, trying to live for God and the world is the worst place that you could ever be in. Because you get none of the blessings of God. Jesus. And you have to deal with all the attack of the world. Jesus. You come to church when it's convenient. And I should say, you may come to church when it's convenient. I understand we have some who travel a long ways to be in church. God bless you this morning. We may pray some of the time. And in too many homes, dust continues to pile upon Jeez. that book that holds the words Jeez. of eternal life. And the whole time, you're under constant attack. Because you are the easiest prey. Too many times have I seen and heard and counseled with those that are trying to live for God. And then to tell me just how hard the battle is. And it seems like they walk into one trial after the other. And don't get me wrong, Peter would say, think it not strange when the fiery trial come. But let me tell you, there should be some time of victory. Paul said that we live from glory to glory. But if you're always living in a trial, there might be a reason. You might want to take a look at the armor. Yeah, that's good. Hallelujah. Jesus. Another thing that you need to know in order to be prepared for the battle is who the enemy is. And man, does this hit home. With me personally and probably with all of you. Look at your neighbor and tell him you're not the enemy. You're not the enemy. You're not the enemy. No, you're not the enemy. In fact, no one walking around here is the enemy. That's right. Our war is not a war against mankind. Our war is a spiritual war. That's right. We don't fight against the addict. We fight against the spirit that causes them to be an addict. And we don't fight against people who hate us. We fight against the spirits that make them hate us. That's right. why we can look at the sinner and sincerely say, I love you. Yeah, amen. But I hate the sin. Yeah. We spend way too much time trying to fix people. And really, we should be rebuking spirits. Amen. That's why your time on the battlefield is so important. That's why your time in the prayer room is so needed. Jesus. If we ever want to see God move in our lives, like we know He is capable. It's not a question of whether our God can. It's a question of whether we will. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. If we want to see God move like that, we need to stop striving with people mm. and start taking ground from the devil. Sweet. You see, some of us, I don't know, I'm not I'm just saying some of us in a general term, some of us are so tired, so weary, because we spend so much time fighting with each other that we don't have enough energy to fight the spiritual fight. Jesus. And brethren and sister in, Hear me when I say this. Quit focusing on the man and start tearing down things in the spirit. Jesus. The next thing that you are going to need to prepare for this battle is some perseverance. Yeah. This is a battle. Sometimes it's going to hurt. I wish I could promise you and say, hey, just come to God. Everything will just be flowers and, and just be loving and just be comforting. But you are listening to a battle. Now the reality of it is you're in a battle whether or not you want it to be or not. The fact that you were born puts you in the middle of a battlefield. The question is which side are you fighting for? Yeah. It's not that living for God is hard. It's just life's hard sometimes. Yeah. And so we don't need to blame God or the enemy when things seem to come up. That's just life. And don't blame the church or don't blame living for God just because something terrible happened to you probably would have happened to you anyway. Yeah. Because that's just living. Jeez. And you live on a battlefield. That's right. 
Sometimes you may get weary. Hallelujah. Jesus. There has to be something within you that says, no matter what offense, hear me. No matter what situation, no matter what circumstance, I'm going to do all I can to stay. I fear that in the church that we have somewhat adopted a welfare mentality. The way we are so reliant on God that we excuse ourselves from any personal responsibility. But Paul said, do all that you can do to stand. That's right. See, the equation is not God and nothing equals great victory. But the equation is God and you yeah. equals great victory. Right. And so we must do all that we can to stand. The Bible would say, the righteous are not easily offended. In fact, this is, I'm going to get off on a little bunny trail here. But when you look at your problems, they're so petty. Yeah. They're so petty. That's right. It's, it's resonating in my heart. I talked about it last week. I'm going to bring it up again. There was a woman who talked about, literally, she, was, she immigrated to the U.S. And she literally watched her son starve to death. A mother who all she wants to do is be nurturing to her children, provide for her children, care for her children, had to sit there as she slowly watched her son deteriorate and slowly die right in front of her. And we think that we have problems. And we're upset that so-and-so said something to us. And this happened to us. And this happened on the job. Friend, let me tell you, you are more blessed than you realize. Friend, why don't you take your perspective around a little bit and understand that it isn't that bad and do all that you can do to stand. Come on. That's good. That's good. That's good. Sometimes the most intimidating thing that you can do is just stand. Yeah. When the enemy throws everything that it has to throw at you, and after all the smoke clears of the bombs that they have dropped on your life, they just see you standing. I promise you, when they see that, they start running. Yeah. Devil, gentle devil's going, hey, we throw everything that we got at them, boss. What do you want us to do? I don't know, but it doesn't look like we're going to win this battle, so let's take off. In fact, James 4, 7 says this, submit yourself therefore unto God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Right. It doesn't say that he'll just casually walk away. But it says that he's going to take off like a freight train because there is nothing more powerful, hallelujah, than an apostolic, baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, that can stand. Come on. Paul gives us five pieces of armor in which we have to have in order to prepare for this battle. And we could spend a whole long time just talking about these pieces. But I'm just going to hit each one of them this morning. The first thing he mentioned was the belt of truth. And let me tell you what a belt, belt does. Now I know in the King James we talked about girding up our loins. If you understand how they used to do it, they would pull their robe between their legs and they would tuck it in their belt. That's what that means. So we... So I'm trying to use a term that we may be more familiar with, the belt of truth. A belt holds things together. You can't be holding a sword in one hand and be holding your pants up with the other and expect to be effective in a fight. Or, sac or sacrifice your shield. And only be able to... Or only Sacrifice your sword and hold your shield and with the other hand try to hold up your pants yeah. because you're not going to be effective in that fight either. Yeah. That's good. That's right. Or if you're a lady, you're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> That's why this charismatic world can't ever th seem to keep things straight. We have so many de different denominations today. It amazes me how many different denominations we have because we only have one Bible. That's right. Even those that claim to have more inspired words or extra books or whatever, they still got the same Bible that we got. They just have some additional stuff. But we still have all these different denominations. The reason why that is is because they let go of truth. 
And when they let go of truth, something else has to be let go of. Yeah. We only have two hands. That's right. And so if your hand is holding something that it was never intended to hold, you have to let go of something, either the word or the faith. And so we have churches that think that you can be baptized in some other way than the name of Jesus. Jeez. And we have other churches that believe that healings were only for the time of the apostles because they had to let go, or because they let go of truth, they had to let go of something else. Jesus. And honey, here, this preacher, once you lose truth, yeah. you're going to lose the battle. Come on, that's good. Next part of your armament is the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate protects your heart and so does righteousness. I tell people all the time, living for God is not hard. Right. It really isn't. All you have to do is keep yourself from places that potentially put you in compromising positions. Yeah. You got a problem with women? Don't be alone with a single girl. There you, go. you got a problem with pornography? Give yourself an accountable part, accountability partner and put something on your computer that yeah. you don't know the password to. It's easy to live for God. You just need to put in place good. a breastplate. That's good. And so righteousness causes us to avoid the profane and the unholy. It causes us to put hearing standards in our lives yeah. to protect right. our heart. Jeez. I am sick and tired the people who have been in the church a long time tell me, well, it's not a heaven or hell issue. Listen, idiot, I don't care if it's a heaven or hell issue. If it protects the heart, it's worth it. And I'm sorry, when I get to heaven someday, I'm not going to sit there and say to Jesus, man, I missed out on all this stuff. I'm just going to shout and sing. I'm not going to care about all this junk in the world. Don't tell me that it's not a heaven or hell issue. Come on. You know, a breastplate was always one of the most heaviest pieces of armor. Huh. Sometimes we feel like it might be too much of a burden. And letting it go is our opportunity to lighten the load. Yeah. And so churches start to lose their standards. And before long, they start losing so much more. Because if you don't have the proper protection for your heart... Jesus. You start wondering why you're in the battle in the first place. Jesus. Talking about being prepared for the battle. Jesus. Your boots should be made of peace. If there was ever a time in my life that I could use some people who were wearing boots of peace, that's right now. <clears throat> Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Jeez. We may fight in a battle, but everywhere your feet have tracked should be full of peace. Jeez. Behind me should not be a wake of destruction and broken people, but instead restored and renewed individuals that were blessed because I came and fought the battle. Jesus. I want to destroy the works of the enemy. But my God, help me to be a builder of my brother. Amen. And help me Jesus. to be there for my sister. Jesus. And Lord, help me to be a peacemaker Amen. for those that have none. Jesus. Because where we walk should be peace. And there are too many. I'm just going to make it a little personal right now. There are too many men in my position. You don't leave a trail of peace. Yeah. At some point, they lost a piece of their own. Wow. That's good. However, you can have all of these things. Wow. But if you don't have faith, you don't have nothing. Yeah. The writer of Hebrews would say, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And it's obvious yeah. that you have to have faith but when it comes to be preparing, being prepared for the battle, faith protects everything. Amen. When the situation looks impossible, 
It's my shield that comes up and blocks the doubt that tries to enter into my mind. When I have tried my best to be the best soldier that I can be, and others keep disappointing me that were supposedly supposed to be serving with me, it is my shield that I put up and just press on. You see, the shield can protect you from a lot of things, even if you were unprepared otherwise. That's good. That's good. So at all costs, make sure you still have your, still have your shield. Because those that fall quickest in this battle are those that no longer have a shield. Jesus. And if you have faith, you'll still pray. And if you pray, you'll be answered. That's right. That's cool. And don't forget Jesus. about your salvation. Amen. Too many churches today out there preaching a lot of good stuff. But just totally avoiding salvation. Yeah. The helmet is what protects the mind. And it is your salvation that will protect yours. Science seems to be so logical in a lot of ways. In fact, we have a nurse here, and I'm sure she's thankful for the advancements in science. You see, it appeals to our carnal mind because there are tests that can appeal to the eyes. Yeah. However, there is one thing that a saved individual will have that no scientist can ever fabricate in their labs. And that's what we call a testimony. Wow. No scientist can go back to, in time and see the supposed Big Bang. Yeah. Or watch the theory of evolution play itself out over a millennia. Yeah. But I can tell you that when I walk into the presence of God, I feel something that's right. right now. And when I got baptized in Jesus' name, I can tell you, yeah. and others can tell you, right. that it changed something. Right. And when he filled me with his spirit, I can promise you, he made me something. Right. Because salvation gave me a testimony. And when I have doubts about the faith, and when I'm frustrated about things I don't understand, I can turn back to a time yeah. where God touched my life That's and right. say, I know that it is real. Jesus. But in order to be a proper warrior, you need to have a good weapon. Now, when I first came to God, I uh, was a little wily with my sword. <laughs> yeah. Sword is a powerful thing. In fact, if you ever learn weapons, combat weapons training, they teach you to have a respect for the weapon. Because just as the weapon can do good, yeah. it can also do harm. And when I first came into the church, I lopped off a lot of heads with my sword. Oh, you're going to hell. You're a sinner. Yeah. <laughs> that shouldn't be seen. But <laughs> Lopping off heads. Jeez. The writer of Hebrews would proclaim that it is sharper than any two-edged sword. Right. Paul would say that it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and instruction in righteousness. And let me just put a little carrot in here and a little comment. Yeah. We get frustrated sometimes because people can be so adamantly against us when we try to reveal to them truth. Yeah. There is no trinity. There's only one God. Right. And they get upset about that. You can only be baptized in Jesus' name. It's right. the only way. And they get right. upset about that. And when you tell them that they don't have the Holy Ghost unless they speak in tongues, whoa, you are stepping in some very sensitive areas. Yeah. It's true. Hallelujah. But why do we argue? Because it's not them that they hate. It's the Word of God. In fact, how many times have you been in a Bible study and just read the scripture? That's all you have to do. And all of a sudden, they're upset at you. Listen, dummy, the Bible's good for reproof, for correction, for doctrine, and instruction in righteousness. The reason why we dress the way that we dress, the reason why we talk the way we talk, is not because there's some brilliant idea that we have, but it's in the Word. It's in the Word. Right. Hallelujah. I'm feeling good this morning. Friend. When we understand just how powerful this weapon is, Jeez. we'll understand just how weak our enemy is. Yeah. In fact, I like to say it like this. Bible says, if thou believest in one God, the devils believe also, and they, they tremble. tremble. How much more then 
I ask you, will they tremble? Will a one God tongue talking? Jesus baptized apostolic walks on the sea. Hallelujah. If they tremble at just the mention, how much more will they tremble at the name? Jesus. Jesus. And Jesus, when confronted by the devil in the wilderness, used it to rebuke him. We got a powerful weapon this morning. Yeah. Don't need your sword at home. Yeah, that's right. And point 11 if you want to stand, that might be good. We just Jeez. stand. We don't always stand around here. But... Jesus. 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 Finally, my friends, pray for each other. Jesus. Paul goes on and says a lot more after that. But I find it interesting. And when he's talking about what we need to be prepared, Jeez. he kind of finishes that thought with saying, hey, yeah. pray, for one another. pray for one another. Pray that each of us would be equipped properly. Jesus. And make sure that your focus is not to point out what my brother or my sister may not be wearing, yeah. but to help them to be arrayed in the armor right. that I've known in my life to protect me so well. Jeez. Because I know this, doesn't matter what they did to you, we are better off with them. Yeah. As long as they submit to God, yeah. we are better off with them Jeez. than without them. No matter how they may betray us, the kingdom is better off if they get right with God and join us in the battle. And so like Paul said in our opening text, let us pray for one another. That God would help us to all Jesus. be arrayed and be prepared Jesus. for the battle. So what I'd ask is that can we do that right now? Jesus. Can we just pray and spend some time praying for one another? Pray for those that are fighting beside us. Pray, hallelujah, that God would help them to become mighty warriors. That God would help them to see the truth.
me to turn back. Yeah. Hallelujah. I felt like it doesn't matter what situation it is, it's not going to be big enough to get me to turn back. Right. Hallelujah. I hope hell is trembling right now. I hope hell understands just how powerful of a force is in this place this morning. Hallelujah. The enemy may come against us with the sword, spirit, and shield. But we come against them in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's not if we will win the battle. The Bible says that we are already more than conquerors. Hallelujah. So I'm making notice to every demon, to every contrary spirit, to anything that may come against me. Hallelujah. You better watch out. Hallelujah, it's time.